guys welcome back to my channel I hope you're all having a great day so far so today's video is going to be all about colic now colic is something that we have become fairly familiar with throughout our experience with our second baby and I heard that a lot of you guys were interested in the topic as well and wanted to hear more about our experience so here I am to give you guys a little bit of background I recently had if you're new here I recently had my second son Arlo and he is the sweetest little old man baby he is turning into the happiest little boy but he was not always like that he has not always been like that he is an emotional little dude he is a very loud and angry little dude or has been and so in today's video I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what I've learned about colic how it comes to life my experience with it in both of my children and then how we've been treating it or what has worked for us to tone it down I gotta say I'm not a professional I am NOT trained in this whatsoever I'm just a fellow normal mama who has gone through this with her kid, talked to a pediatrician, adjusted a few things, and feel like I figured out a good groove. So I'm just sharing my findings in that way, but definitely if you're somebody who is going through colic with your kids or um, you wanna learn more professional, get more professional advice on it, definitely talk to a pediatrician, talk to a doctor, do your research, but hopefully this video is helpful just in a very like real life mama kind of way. So first I will mention, like I said, I'll be talking about my son Arlo. So he's three and a half months old right now. Um, and we started noticing these symptoms right around the six week mark with him, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. But when you hear me refer to my kids, I have Arlo who is three and a half months old at the moment. And then I have my son Christian who is two and a couple months as well. Okay, so first I want to explain a little bit about what is colic exactly. I feel like there's a misconception around colic. I know br previously before I experienced this in my own kid, I had a very different view of colic from what it actually is. So when you Google it, the definitions you'll see come up from the Mayo Clinic, they say it's predictable periods of significant distress in an otherwise well-fed healthy baby. So they're fed, they're taken care of, and there's basically no reason for all the excessive crying. So pretty much colic is that crazy, excessive crying, screaming in a way that you can't console it. You can't treat it. It's like the baby is fed, or it seems like you can't at least. The baby is fed, you know, the baby has nursed, slept well, just woke up from a nap, super comfortable, diaper changed, all like you've tried all the tricks and you can't console it and they're just screaming. Um, Jordan and I also found somewhere online it mentioned that colic can be like diagnosed when it's three hours or more of crying in one day. So if your baby is crying excessively like that to the point where you can't console it or treat it for three or more hours a day, it's probably to the point of being colic. The reason I continue to use air quotes is that I think there's a view of like colic as this illness, right? Or this like disease where it's like your baby either does or doesn't have colic. That's kind of the general view. That's at least the view I had. Um, my parents and mom and dad, you're probably watching this or if you are watching this, this is not meant in a bad way, but my parents always told me as I was growing up that I had colic as a baby. Like I just knew that I was a super fussy baby, that I screamed and cried like till the cows come home, is that a saying? I'm a, I can be a dramatic emotional person. I'm a cancer, I'll admit it. So apparently that really came to life when I was a baby. And so my parents always told me I had colic and that was true, but there's also, you know, the fact that all babies have some form of colic because colic all it means is that excessive crying and so most babies are going to go through a, sort of a colicky phase and i'll talk more about that in a second but most babies will go through that colicky phase it's just a matter of how severe it is so for my first son christian around six weeks he really started to be fussy to the point where we couldn't console him. He was overstimulated a lot. Later I realized that was the reason for his fussiness. Um, but you know, he would have that like crazy excessive crying a lot around six weeks. Like I remember thinking six weeks was when it started to get really hard, the whole parenting thing, um, at least being a new mom. His started to fade off around eight weeks. It was really only a three week or so period that it 
felt like it was unbearable. Like six to eight weeks was super tough. With Arlo, same thing. At six weeks, he started to get really fussy. He started to get really emotional to the point where we couldn't console him but it didn't ease up at eight weeks. It wasn't easing up at nine. If anything, it was just getting worse and worse. So at eight weeks, we talked to his pediatrician at his eight week appointment, and that's where we got a lot of the tips that I'm going to share with you guys today. So the reason I share these examples is because colic really will come to life in a lot of different babies in a lot of different ways. It's just a matter of how intense it might get or how long it might be. So all of that to say, don't be afraid of colic. I think when I became a parent, I was very much like, oh my gosh, does my baby have colic? He can't have colic. He can't be a colicky baby. I can't deal with that. And the reality is like, no, he probably does have it a little bit. So let's figure out why and let's treat it and let's fix it. And it's totally doable and totally easy to handle. Not easy, but it's totally capable of being handled. And that's what I want to share with you guys today so that you feel really confident and really equipped to, you know, go into it, whether your baby has like a little bit of colic, a ton of colic um, or somewhere in between or maybe you've got a super easy breezy baby but you're not afraid of it if it does come up. So that sort of brings me to my next definition. What to expect on their website says colic is not a disease or a diagnosis but a combination of baffling behaviors. It's really just a catch-all term for excessive crying in otherwise healthy babies. It's common it usually occurs in one in five infants. My thing here to pay the most attention to is that it's not a disease or a diagnosis diagnosis. It's that combination of behaviors and that's what our pediatrician told us is that colic is often viewed as this illness like I said that you either have it or you don't but in reality colic is a symptom to other things in your baby that need to be taken care of. So for my first son Christian it popped up because he was overstimulated a lot. We had a lot of guests, we had people in and out of the house, we were going on walks all the time, he was a little more sensitive to the light and the noises um, and I didn't know that at the time. I thought he was just crying for no reason. It's like a first time mom thing. Totally normal if you think that as well. With Arlo, we realized it was due to food sensitivities. He just has a much more sensitive tummy than his older brother did and then I don't know, a lot of babies do apparently. So if you have a baby that is experiencing a colicky period or colic, it's really about figuring out why it's happening for them and then trying to tweak the surroundings or treat try and tweak those behaviors to make them more comfortable. So now that I've given you guys kind of all of that background, I'll give you the tips just straight up that our pediatrician gave us. Because like I said, at eight weeks, we talked to her about what was going on. And she told us that most likely with Arlo, it sounded like it was due to food sensitivities and due to his tummy just being more sensitive than we initially thought. I am a breastfeeding mama with both my kids. I breastfed them, still breastfeeding Arlo. And so what I was eating was actually affecting him much more than I thought it was. With Christian, he had the overstimulation thing, but I could pretty much eat whatever I wanted to and it didn't affect him the same way. He had, you know, typical gassiness that babies would have, but with Arlo, it was like, it was an extreme bit of uncomfortable that he was going through and we could tell. He was also spitting up a lot. Pretty much every time he ate, he would spit up. So he had acid reflux and I think that was due to the foods he was eating and due to just his stomach being more sensitive. So the tips that we were given to make it easier. One, cut out all dairy. Like straight up, our doctor was just like, are you still eating dairy or do you have meat or animal products? And I was like, I'm a vegetarian. We don't drink real milk in our house, but yeah, I love cheese, I love yogurt. And she said, cut all of that stuff out. I remember very vividly because I love cheese. And she said, cut all of it out, like immediately cold turkey right now, no more dairy in that sense. That was the first thing. And apparently the more moms I talk to and the more I hear about, apparently that is like super common and that can a lot of times oftentimes be the main culprit is just dairy. So if you're looking to tweak your diet, I would recommend doing that. That's what's been recommended to me, just cutting out dairy cold turkey and seeing if that helps. She also said as he's having what we now refer to as episodes, if he was having a little episode, to stop in that moment and think back four to six hours before that crying fit and think about what I ate at that point. If he was having a freak out in the evening or in the middle of the night, what did I have for lunch prior to that? If he was freaking out at three in the morning, what did I have for dinner? Um, you know, if it was breakfast, then 
what did I have as a late night snack? You, you know what I'm saying? So just like thinking back to try and figure out aside from dairy, what foods could potentially be bothering him. I will say when I cut out dairy, I noticed a huge, huge decrease in his meltdowns, but they were still happening. They weren't happening all day, every day, but they were still happening, you know, every day or so. So a couple of the foods that I noticed just as I started to track my own diet were one, eggs would really bother him. And when I say eggs, I mean like fried eggs in the morning, scrambled eggs in the morning. We are typically a big like breakfast family. We're basically like a family of Ron Swanson's over here. And so I would love to have eggs every morning for breakfast. But then the problem was that every day around lunchtime, Arlo was super uncomfortable. And so I realized eggs were definitely something that affected him. And I also have to put like a little star here because as I'm talking about dairy and I'm talking about eggs and some of the other things, there may be trace, for me and my approach at least, there may be trace amounts of these things in the ingredients I'm using as I cook. So for example, I put out a what I eat in a day video recently and I talked about the veggie sausages I ate in the morning. Um, and I got a lot of questions about those or other things having potentially, you know, egg whites in the ingredients um, or things like that. If they do to me, I don't cut it out as strictly to go down all the way to the ingredients of something only because it's not an allergic reaction for myself and I wanted to sort of figure out how much tweaking was necessary. So for me, actually just cutting out like a hard normal egg in the, like I don't know how to describe it other than the word hard, but cutting out like a full normal egg in the morning, that has been enough for us. Um, if it's not enough, then yeah, maybe you need to go down to like even the ingredients and the trace amounts, but we don't have, it's not an allergic, it's not an allergy reason why I'm cutting it out. So for me, I don't mind if there's trace amounts here or there. So just want to explain a little bit there to you guys, because you may see in my eat, what I eat in a day is that it seems somewhat like hypocritical and that's not the intention, it's just more my approach. Then the third thing I started to cut out was gluten in the form of bread. So I, like I said, eggs would cause a freak out in him and I also realized that he was freaking out from me having toast. So I would do like avocado toast in the morning but no longer put egg on it and he would still freak out. And then I would have like a veggie burger for lunch and he was still really struggling and I realized it was from the buns. So I went to gluten-free bread, gluten-free hamburger buns, anything like that. Um, there are still, like I said, still trace amounts of gluten here or there and like powders I'm using and things like that. But for the most part, when it comes to bread, I only use gluten-free bread. And those three cutouts, dairy, Gluten in the form of bread and um, eggs have been life-changing. It is like Arlo is a completely different baby now. Like he is just so happy, he is more comfortable. But I will say, if I even try a little bit of any of those categories, he reverts back and we'll have another episode. So last night, I tried to get a little daring and I had a tiny bit of margarita pizza and it was a rough night, I will tell you. So we are not quite at the point where I can introduce those things just yet, but another thing his pediatrician told us was that his stomach sensitivities should ease up around four months or, you know, around that. She said at four months, his stomach will start to get less sensitive. So, you know, maybe come five months, I'll try and introduce some of these things again. I definitely plan on working them back in eventually, but as long as it takes for him to just be comfortable, I'm totally fine cutting them out for as long as possible too. But that's something she told us as well, was four months. That's what we're waiting on. <laughs> Another thing that really helped us is what we call the colic hold. And this is a specific way that Jordan holds Arlo when he is walking around the house trying to get him to calm down. We had so many nights where Arlo would just be screaming his head off, crying, and it was like breastfeeding did nothing for him, cuddling with me did nothing for him, skin to skin was nothing, diaper, like we tried everything. But the one thing that worked is that Jordan would put him in this colic hold position and just slowly walk around the house with him and the bounce the slow bouncing of the walking and then this position really helped ease the position itself helped ease some of the pressure on Arlo's tummy so it kept him comfortable and it would just like I don't know it was like a miracle worker I think that in combination with the bouncing would either put him to sleep or it would make him just stop crying and he would be hanging there in, in um, Jordan's arms like 
wide-eyed but calm. It was very eerie, but it worked. And apparently, I didn't even remember, but Jordan said that was something he learned in one of our newborn classes the first time around. So he definitely busted that out this time, and it was a lifesaver. Another piece of advice our pediatrician gave us that we definitely implemented was propping Arlo's head up anytime he was laying down. Um, if he was laying in his bassinet, if I had to put him down in the bassinet, I pushed, I put like a tiny bit of padding underneath the mattress. So he's still flat on the mattress, but it just like bumped his head up a tiny bit and had him propped a little bit. I would do the same thing in the Dakota if he was in the Dakota. Um, just trying to elevate his head a little bit because him laying flat is what would really kickstart that acid reflux and cause him to spit up and cause him to be uncomfortable and cause him to cry. So propping him up a tiny bit, the pediatrician okayed it and that's what we would do and it really helped a lot. The next thing we would also do would be to take him to a dark room and give him quietness. So sometimes when babies have colic like that, they may be overstimulated to begin with. Like I talked about Christian, his crying would also would often be due to overstimulation. But then it's like their crying and their freakouts only stimulates them more and it's sort of like this big cycle. So um, with Christian, we were given the advice by his doctor to take him to a very quiet, very dark pitch black room. You know, if you need white noise or whatever, if that helps your baby, but just take him somewhere quiet, calm and alone with just you to try and like desensitize them a little bit. And that really worked. I would also do that with Arlo. I have to say with Arlo, he's sort of like, poor kid, he was born into a loud house. My two year old is loud as hell and you know we have two dogs and we're in quarantine all the time and he's it's not possible to get a lot of quietness but when he would you know have really really bad episodes that's what I would try and do I'd take him to whatever room I could close the door and have it be as dark as possible and as quiet as possible and just rock him in the chair and if he wanted to nurse I'd nurse him or just like hold him to my chest but just get those quiet moments of peace to really try and like calm down his nerves a little bit and that usually helped a lot too. A couple other things that I heard from some of you guys actually to help colic would be to run a humidifier in the room. Sometimes you know if the air is too dry that could be making them uncomfortable so running a humidifier to help them sleep. Um, also lavender oil if you're like diffused using lavender oil or if you just put it on a little cloth and keep it in the room somewhere nearby, that could help them as well. Um, there's a ton of little helpful tips like that. If you guys have any of your own, leave them in the comments down below because you know we can all learn from each other in that sense. But that's everything for our colic journey. Like I said, Arlo is a totally different baby now. He really doesn't, he's three and a half months old now so he's I think like 15 weeks, 14 weeks old and I've, I've been doing this structured diet since he was eight weeks and apparently I can't lift it yet that's totally fine um, we're still learning we're not quite in the clear yet but it is so oh my gosh like 98 percent better I swear to you so if you are experiencing the same thing hang in there just grab some me time when you need it be calm take your baby to a place of calm, talk to the pediatrician, try and figure out exactly what it is that could be contributing to your baby's colic, and then just tweak as necessary. But it is all a phase, I promise you, it will end. We saw from our first son, you come out of it, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and you know, I know now from our experience with Arlo, it was like he was the most angry, emotional, upset baby all the time, and now he's like the sweetest little thing. But if you push his buttons the wrong way, he could get upset again a little bit, you know? So it'll all get better. But anyways, that's all I have for today's video. I hope that these tips and our experience and just hearing about a fellow mama, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Let me know anything else you'd like to see and I will see you in my next video. Bye.